Aww. Hmm. Hello everyone, welcome back to New Horizons. We have a big episode planned for today. So we are going to be adding some more bees, crafting some more machines, and refining the auto-crafting systems. All in an attempt to craft and sustain a Vulcanus, or two, or four maybe, I haven't really decided at this very moment in time. Um, but yeah, I was going to do ore processing and upgrade a few more of our machines. But I'm also just kind of in the mood to start a brand new project, so I think that's what we're going to do this episode. So first you might be wondering, what is a Vulcanus? A Vulcanus is an upgrade to the Blast Furnaces. Right now we have 8 Blast Furnaces, 4 running at IV with HSS S coils, and 4 running at EV with HSS G coils. But you know what, I think we can do with a bit of an upgrade, especially as we're about to enter the LUV tier, and in LUV we need lots and lots of things like Osmeridium, Osmium, Ruridit, Iridium, all the Platline materials, Rhodium Plated Palladium, uh, yeah, HSSS, Niobium Titanium, Yttrium Barium Cuprate, the list goes on. <laughs> and that doesn't even uh, account for the Tungsten Steel, or Regular Steel, or Aluminium, or uh, yeah, all the things we've been using up until this point. All of them cooked in the blast furnaces. They are turned off right now, but basically all of last episode they had something to be smelted. And to be honest, we should probably just be smelting something right now. Even if we don't need it right now, we are going to need it later on, so let's just request like a thousand tungsten steel to get us started. So anyway, since the last episode, we have successfully moved over all of the infrastructure from the old base here into the brand new base in the void. And I did go ahead and move the turbines between episodes, um, so those, the remaining five that we had here are now generating us power in our main power spine uh, for the main multi-block battery. So right now we no longer have anything remaining here in the overworld. And it's not exactly the safest place to be anymore. Oh, <laughs> that was kind of close. That was kind of close. Yeah, there's no longer any power or machinery here, so we no longer have the mob repellers preventing mob spawns. Um, so yeah, this is not a very safe place to be anymore. Nope, nope. <laughs> I'm just tempting fate. I really shouldn't. We really shouldn't do that. So yeah, as you can see here, um, as it stands currently, we have 15 large gas turbines and one XL gas turbine. And uh, they just turned on, so we'll be able to see actually how much power we're generating. At least over five seconds in our uh, screen here. I think I've seen this get to about 290 EU a tick over five seconds. Oh yeah, 280, 290, it nearly hit 290. Remember, this is just an average though, so it's not completely accurate, but it's it's almost about there. You can probably calculate it um, if I give you some of the numbers here. Yeah, let's see. Every large gas turbine generates 8192, and the XL gas turbine generates... Where is the number here? Yeah, 130,560 EU a tick. And we have, yeah, 20 turbines. Yeah, we've come a long way f since the first steam turbine, generating as a tiny e 32 EU a tick. <laughs> I remember all the way back then. Um, but soon this is going to be like peanuts, it's going to be absolutely nothing as we tear up and uh, progress through the pack. Uh, but one of the benefits to Vulcanus actually is it does give us an energy discount on all of the smelting recipes. So Vulcanus by default will just give us a 10% energy discount. I think it's going to be 10%. I'm not sure how the math is going to work out because we can also smell 8 in parallel. It does 8 recipes in parallel, and it's 120% of the speed um, of the regular Blast Furnaces. So, we'll see later on when we have them crafted, but there is a long way before we can... <laughs> before we have our op uh, Vulcanus operational, as there is some other considerations to actually run and sustain the Vulcanus. And this is where our bees are going to help us out today. Um, so, there are several different methods we could go to solve this issue. And the issue I'm talking about is that the Vulcanus will consume 
10 litres of blazing pyrothium per second during operation. So the blazing pyrothium is a fluid, it goes inside the pyrothium heating vent. To make blazing pyrothium we have basically two options and we're going to go for the B option. But just to show you the second one, we can either mix redstone, sulphur, coal dust and blaze powder in a mixer for, for pyrothium dust. Or we can grab the pyrothium queen and a 15% special output is going to give us the pyrothium comb. And this can be centrifuged for a 20% chance at pyrothium dust. So there's multiple chance outputs here. I'm not sure how many bees we're going to have to add to sustain the Vulcanus. And I'm also, I haven't decided how many Vulcanus we're going to craft either. But we want to have a stable production of pyrothium. So yeah, we could either start with the bees or we could start with crafting the Vulcanus. And since we've done so much machine crafting lately, I think we'll start with the bees. It's been a while since I've been in the genetics lab here. But yeah, first of all... Yeah, I guess first of all, let's try to get our Pyrothium Queen. Alright, well, as you can see behind me, we have two Pyrothium Queens in their alvearies, making us their special combs, in this case, uh, Pyrothium and Energy. Just I just went for two for now, although I did change the biomes here on four spaces. And this is the Corrupted Sands biome, so yeah, it's uh, giving them the hellish added temperatures to produce their special output. It looks like I did miss the conduit here, maybe, yeah. Conduit is the wrong colour, this should be uh, Extract Blue. Now it's going back to the system, perfect. And uh, yeah, I did put the perfect stats on the bees as well, so they should be longest lifespan and blinding production speed. We also have our um, standard setup here of the three electrical stimulators. So we're, we're at 15.790 production, which is the maximum we can get with the Alveary. Um, so yeah, right now we have two. I think I'm going to add four. I'm just working on getting some more princesses up and running right now. But the process to actually get the Pyrothium Bee wasn't too bad. All we had to do was combine energy and redstone. And both energy and redstone we had on passive already. So we had drones of that species. I did also take the whole setup into the nether to get the hellish temperature requirement, which is necessary to breed the Pyrothium Bee. But because of the setup of our specific breeding alveary with the electrical stimulators, and since the mutation chance is greater than 1%, we are pretty much guaranteed to get the Pyrothium B with the right conditions. And the other ones here, yeah, as I said, I'm just working on getting some more princesses up and running. I'm just going to use these wintery ones, so long as they're pristine. Um, because obviously with pristine stock, they don't ever die in the alveary, no matter how many mutations you run. Or how many work cycles, rather. So we can run it infinitely inside the alvearies to produce the, the combs. Yeah, we are just going to grab a few spare pyrothium drones to be able to... That should cycle back in there, right? Unless the conduit still isn't correct, it should be on self-feed. Yeah, self-feed and insert blue here as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the the that's going to be in an infinite loop. Yeah, so it was a pretty simple first step for the Pyrothium bee. Uh, you might have noticed that there's two bees on the pin list up there. And the second bee is not going to be quite so easy to get. These are all junk bees. Um, we're getting unlucky here. That's another wind tree. Come on, Pyrothium. Okay, a few generations later, we do have the Pyrothium princess here again. And uh, yeah, we've got Longest, Blinding, 4x, Average, Beatific. Really, the only two stats that actually matter for putting it on passive is Lifespan and Production. So long as these are fastest, then we'll get the maximum output from the bee. It looks like we do happen to have the perfect bee here, though. Yeah, I mean, we might as well just go for the perfect stats, right? <laughs> it's not too difficult now that, we, now that we have them on some amount of bees. It's very, very simple to pass them on in the APD at least with the oblivion frames. So yeah, all of these are just junk bees. And we have, we've amassed quite a lot of junk bees. I'm still keeping them, but you guys said there's not really much need to keep them. Yeah, pretty much all of these compressed chests right here are full of bees uh, from when we done the breeding a number of episodes ago. And this tanks the FPS when you look at this. <laughs> but the reason they're here is just so we can separate them out and they're not all in the same chunk. I don't know what we're gonna do with these. We might just end up deleting them because I don't know if there's much use to them. You guys said there wasn't really much use to keep them. I have kept them around though, just in case. But yeah, we have we have a lot of uh, junk bees there. 
uh, from breeding different species. Yeah, so since we have the space laid out here, I realize this is also in the wrong place. This has to be forward a block. At least if we want it consistent with the rest, and of course we do. Let's fill this back in. So you guys might be able to tell that um, the keyboard I'm using sounds a bit different. And my keyboard unfortunately died yesterday. So <laughs> I'm on like a, a temporary setup right here. It's very loud. It's the one I used to use. And it's, it's not ideal. So I'm hoping to be able to replace it with the same one I had. Because honestly, I love that thing. I was, It was like the perfect keyboard for me. Um, but yeah, this is the one I used for the last 10 years. And then I switched it out last summer. And uh, I do prefer the new one that I had, which is now broken. Um, no clue how it broke. It just doesn't turn on anymore. So that's a <laughs> not really ideal. Um, and so I lost quite a lot of time. I think this episode is going to be quite late. Because, uh, yeah, there was there was a very long time where I was not able to Greg. And these should also be, uh, should be electrical stimulators. Man, this just takes so long to craft. We have all the resources by now. Like, crafting alvearies is not an issue anymore since the bees have been running for so long. But it's just our assembler speeds. It's just insanely slow <laughs> to actually get any of this stuff crafted. So, yeah, we're going to be waiting for a little while. But luckily, we do have time as, uh, yeah, back to this extra bee that we have on the pin list. Um, the extra bee is the Krypton bee, and I think we're going to go for the Krypton bee this episode as well. I'm not sure as to its viability, but the Krypton bee is going to be able to give us the Krypton comb, which we can fluid extract for Krypton gas. And Krypton gas we can use inside a blast furnace, including the Vulcanus. So to give you an example here, rhodium plated palladium, which is cooked in the blast furnace, of course. When smelted with helium, which is what we have an abundance of, so this is what we'd be using, it takes 506.25 seconds per ingot. However, we can also use a bunch of other gases here, including Krypton, uh, right here, and this takes it down to 281.25 seconds, so a significant speed upgrade. And, in fact, Xenon goes down to 225, so we might also... There is also a Xenon B, so it might be worth getting that as well. Although the Xenon B is um, mutated from the Krypton B, so we have to get the Krypton B first regardless. So I'm not sure as to its viability, um, the Krypton B that is. There is other ways to get Krypton, mainly the distillation of gas, of, of liquid air, sorry. Yeah, you can get Krypton a few other ways, like from reactors and from distilling liquid air, but I think I want to go for the B method, and we'll just see as to its viability. It might be a waste of time, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know how worth it is going to be. But we are going to pick up a lot of bees along the way um, to get this thing because looking at the breeding path for the Krypton bee here, we don't have neon, we don't have ergast, we don't have thomium, we don't have hydra, we don't have argon, we don't have helium. <laughs> we don't have anything on this page. And remember, all of these have their own breeding requirements. Like the Thaumium bee has to be in Magical Forest and have a block of Thaumium underneath. And they're all different as well. So I have a feeling this might take me the rest of the day to get this bee. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're going to pick up a lot of bees along the way. What do you think, Diddy? You think it's worth it? You're the bee expert. I think I'm going to go for it. Um, and uh, that will also give us a chance to build up a supply of Pyrothium. Uh, to use in our Vulcanus when we have that crafted. But yeah, like the last time we got some more bees, I think we'll do this in a time lapse since it's the most efficient way to convey the information. And there's a lot of it spread out. So uh, yeah, let's let's just um, quit procrastinating and, <laughs> and uh, go for this Krypton bee. Where do we even start here? Where do we even start? I think we'll start here at Helium. We should have... Oh boy, we don't even have stainless steel. We have chrome and regular steel, so I guess we'll start here. Yeah, we'll, st we'll start here at stainless steel. So as it turns out, we didn't have a steel bee here either to start with, but uh, mixing coal and iron resulted in a successful mutation. And I thought since we have this bee, we might as well put it to work. So. The steel bee requires warm, normal climates, and so I swapped it into the energy bee alveary, as the new pyrothium bees we just made also give us the energy combs. We don't need to have another specific bee making us energy and dust, so now by swapping in the steel bee, we have a free and passive source of steel dust. 
Similar to the last time we worked with the bees, you can also assume that I made backup drones for each bee along the way. And with that, we moved on to the next few bees in the chain for Krypton. Many requiring some pretty specific conditions to mutate, but I'll let the footage speak for itself. So I think in total I was at this for about 8 hours playtime, I'm not entirely sure but it's around that around that sort of time scale to get the Krypton B. Um, and in the meantime I was also wrestling with the keyboard as well. I had the whole thing taken apart. <laughs> like all the switches off. I was looking for any loose connections, um, just trying to revive it. But unfortunately I didn't have much luck and so yeah that thing is completely dead. Um, yeah, I'm quite sad about that, but I'm going to replace it because, uh, yeah, I do want that keyboard back. The one that I'm on right now, this ducky, it's uh, served me very well for the last 10 years, but I can't go back to this. Not after being on the new, the new one that I had. Anyways, getting back to the bees here, we have lots and lots of new species, uh, many of which I do intend to put on passive. Um, there's a lot of useful resources we can get from them. I think I'll do that another day though, I really want to get into this Vulcanist project. So the main ones we want here is the Krypton bee, the Pyrothium bee. Um, I did give a space for the Thomium bee as well, since we'll need to start Thomcraft pretty soon. A lot of you guys have been asking about that, and uh, yeah, we do still have to do our Thomcraft project. So now we have a, a passive source of thomium dust, and then yeah, of course I also gave a uh, space for the steel bee as well for steel dust. But yeah, overall it was pretty relaxing uh, just messing around with the bees. Time consuming, that is for sure. <laughs> Very time consuming, but yeah, it was pretty chilled out. Alright guys, well we made it, we're at the other side, we have our Krypton bees, and I've been busy adding a whole bunch more alvearies. Um, yeah, as you can see here we have 5 running Krypton, and I also went ahead and added the Neon as well. Neon is going to give us uh, Neon gas when we fluid extract, however you'll notice here that this is an IV recipe, and it's the same situation with the Krypton bees. Um, they haven't been running so long, but so far we're over 2500 Krypton combs. And uh, yeah, we need to fluid extract this at IV, and I want to do this passively as well, but um, fortunately I have already thought of a solution. And the solution is going to come in the form of the large processing factories. Um, we're going to do um, all the bee processing, I think up in the hives, I was considering moving it and doing it, ov doing it um, like over here where we handle crops. But I think we can squeeze it in actually over in the hives, but first of all we're going to have to actually craft another large processing factory. So while waiting for some more alvearies to craft, I did also go ahead and encode the recipe for the full large processing factory. Um, I think I got all the recipes here, and there was quite a few of them. Remember, this is the one that takes the six IV machines. Um, so yeah, we do have the recipe encoded. Let's see how, how much it takes for one. Wow, we're missing wafers, really? Okay, let's add that to the pin list. <laughs> this crafting screen is insane. Okay, wait. We can also check out the grid view as well. Look at this. Look how many resources it takes for one large processing factory. Oh my goodness, it keeps going. <laughs> That's insane. Look how many different steps there are. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen a craft this big. Um, although I do know that it gets much more crazy late game. Um, and we're still not in the late game, I can tell you that much. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can see a breakdown of everything. It shows you the... Oh cool, it shows you the amounts and then the pattern sizes, right? Yeah, so it goes, I guess, from bottom to top. This is the input items down here. Then that crafts into, like, central pro processing units. Then it gets sent to another interface to be crafted into a nano CPU. Then to another interface to be a qubit. Then to the cutting machine to be qubit processing units. And then all these combine in this interface here to make the circuit. And then that combines with all these 
down here to make this circuit, <laughs> then into the molecular assembler, then it makes the compressor, and the compressor is combined with uh, the lathe and yeah, all the other machines in the chain, all the way down into the large processing factory controller. But um, yeah, we're, we're missing wafers here. How are we missing wafers? Okay, so I had a look through this interface terminal here and I found this recipe right here. And I could be wrong, but I don't think we should be using this recipe at this point in the game. There is uh, 35 different recipes here for the central processing unit. And I think we should have actually upgraded this to phosphorus doped wafers a long time ago. It's just that we had so many wafers in backlog in our storage. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna f we're gonna switch the the recipe to this one instead and use phosphorus doped wafers, which are made from silicon solar grade, uh, small gall gallium arsenide crystals, and phosphorus dust. And uh, so far, we've just been batching uh, batch crafting these. Yeah, just a little over 1,500 in our system, but these are also made in the blast furnace, so we can probably get benefit from the Krypton B here as well, maybe? No, this is different fluid. This is either organesson, xenon, or nitrogen. And I found out earlier that xenon can only be made from the bees in the Mega Apiary. Uh, so I think I'll add that to the earlier section in the video, but yeah, we can't quite get the xenon B right now. We have to settle for Krypton. Uh, so yeah, this is going to go back in the glass lens and that should fix the recipe for the large processing factory here Now we can request it <laughs> That is going to take forever to craft. I sh probably should have had some of this getting crafted Yeah, that is a lot of materials. Anyway, there's no time like the present So let's just hit start here and we'll see how long this takes um, But fortunately, I have already put together the rest of the components for this and they should be in a chest down here Right here we have the casing, we have the maintenance hatch, we should have the energy hatch as well, we're going to need bare minimum IV, and uh, yeah, I think we will just run this at IV for now, and uh, we're actually going to replace these fluid extractors right here, which are fluid extracting honeydew into honey, and uh, the oily propolis into oil, which we then send across the room here into some combustion generators, um, along with the fuel, which is also fluid extracted over on the other side. And this is how we're actually powering the bees. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys will remember this setup, but we're gonna keep this in place. We are gonna replace this though with a large processing factory. And that means we can just switch to one multi-block machine handling all the recipes. Um, eventually it's not gonna be fast enough, but we can eventually overclock it or maybe even stack two or three or four uh, next to each other. And so yeah, we want to fluid extract the pyrothium dust, the krypton combs, the neon combs and uh, both of these as well, honeydew and oily pro propolis. Although on second thought, we do have 420k honey drops. So if we filter this in uh, to the fluid extractor, that's going to clog up the machine forever, basically. So um, maybe, uh, may yeah, maybe on second thought, we will keep these around and I'll just move them off to the side somewhere. And uh, yeah, we'll set up our large processing factory right here. But while this is crafting, let me take you back. Oh, wow, this is actually going much faster than I thought. Arcanite might be stuck here, although that is a very long recipe. It's like 120 seconds, I think. Man, this is going faster than I thought. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we have actually, we have just upgraded auto crafting, so it should be fast. I just didn't expect it to be that fast. Okay, I tell you what, since we're waiting on the craft, I'll take you back a couple of hours when I was still working on the bees. And uh, in the meantime, I'll work out a placement for those fluid extractors, and we'll come back and set up the machine here. Okay, so I'm currently in the middle of this bee breeding project here. Um, I'm a couple of hours into this so far. I just added the Thomium bee here. We actually don't need these vines. Let's remove them. Um, yeah, so I'm a couple of hours into this project by now. Still have a ways to go before we can get the Krypton Queen. Um, yeah, we just picked up Thomium. We still need to get Hydra. And then Argon. And we have all these down here. So we're like four bees away. The main time investment though is just making sure that we keep the backup stock, like I said, so yeah, you can see here with the amount of uh, species we now have, 112 in backup, and I think we're still missing a few from the very, very early stages, um, but that was back when we first started bees. So far we haven't needed those, so yeah, 112 is the species that we're currently at, and if we check the quest page here, we have made some pretty significant progress here, picking up a lot of the worthwhile bees. However, I was just checking the subnet here after getting the first Thomium Dust Combs. 
Um, and we should also add these to the centrifuge down here. So we have to add it to the stalking input bus. And this is going to give us, of course, the... It's going to give us magic wax at 50% chance. There's not much use for magic wax as far as I can tell. Um, it's basically useless for us unless we want to make magic frames. But yeah, the main thing we want from this is the thomium dust. We get 100% chance from the comb. But the comb is only a 20% chance from the bee. Um, so, and it looks like we'll, we'll also need another stocking bus here. Oh, we have one crafted. Well, I am surprised. <laughs> Are we going to have channels here, though? Uh, where is this connected to? It's up here somewhere. Oh, it's this one back here. And this is on the dense cable, so, yeah, connected straight on the controller. So we have, um, 32 channels available. Or 31 channels, if we don't count this existence docking bus. I think we'll do it on the side here. And that might have just voided something. <laughs> it's alright. And also the the steel comb as well. Of which we already have over 800. And this gives us a 40% chance at steel dust. The numbers here seem somewhat arbitrary. but And yeah, this is 15%. So it's actually lower than the thomium dust one. A lower percent chance to generate steel. Anyways, yeah, getting back to the subnet here. I realised we're going to have to do something about the storage as we are quickly running out of storage space and there's multiple bees which are giving us the same output mainly the slag comb which we can centrifuge for stone dust, black granite, red granite and beeswax but I think we're just gonna set up a, a super chest for slag combs since we don't need any of those outputs so we don't need to process it so um, yeah let's just grab some super chest twos some storage buses we do have some crafted, um, some sticky cards, and some yellow cable. And so yeah, where's the best place to put them? I don't think we're going to need too many of these, so maybe we'll put them on the back here. Um, it's going to mess up this little mural, but um, potentially like like that. <laughs> that looks a little... In fact, no, there's cable behind here, right? Yeah, and it has to be on the yellow net. And yellow net is not super accessible from back here. Now we can definitely make it work though. If we uh, grab some cable from right here and we can pass it through the wireless connector since this does also act as cable. Um, just for to not confuse ourselves in the future though, I'm going to add some cable anchor here so we don't connect to the drive. And we'll let the dense cable on the side here connect to the drive. And uh, yeah, connect that to the network. So... We're going to do yellow cable across here and then we'll uh, plug it in on the side here and we'll, we can do the same thing on the other side even going uh, through this interface which is how we uh, view the subnet of the bees um, in the main net via this interface right here and storage bus uh, but we just need to plug these super chests in give them a storage bus of their own we'll filter in slag combs in one high priority Sticky card, uh, yeah, sticky card in the storage bus, and this is going to be for the slide combs. So yeah, we have space here for lots of. Oh, this is this is going to have to be hempcrete facades, which we don't have. Oh, we have some orange. Don't have any of the blue ones. We can cover up the cable here. So there was a couple of other things I want to put in the storage chests as well, just to make sure we can void overflow, like so. And we'll also want to transfer the existing storage, all these slag combs which are currently in block container cells actually. Um, but I'm going to just drop them all into super chests. So we can do that with an MEIO port. Uh, this thing right here. If we put, place this anywhere on the network and we grab the slag combs here, um, we can say that we want to transfer from the drive into storage. It says ME drive here, but this is like subnet storage, and because the uh, because these have the sticky cards, this is the only available destination for the slag combs. So when we drop this um, these drives in here, it's going to all empty out into the super chests. So we'll do that with all of these. We also have stone combs there, which I realized we're probably also going to want to move over. Ah, yes, you can see the bytes are reducing on the on the drive. That means all the items inside here are being emptied out. And it honestly shouldn't take too long. This is normally a pretty fast process. Oh yeah, it only took a few seconds to empty the first drive. The second one is now 
Wow, look how fast that is. And I think you can also add acceleration cards here. Yeah, I'm also going to go ahead and add the stone combs here. Sticky card. Priority 1000. And we'll empty out this block container. Um, let's just actually double check they are going into the super chests. Oh yeah. 411,000 slag combs, which are going to be overflow voided. Same with the stone combs. And uh, yeah, is there anything else we want to do th this for? Probably also honey drops. We, we do use honey drops in the bealizer to scan the different bees, but we do not need like half a million. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's also add honey drops and beeswax as well. We're safe to avoid any overflow for this. And that should be all for now. So beeswax and we're short a storage bus. We can request it now though, which is excellent. <laughs> it's so nice having all this stuff requestable at this point. Yeah, so honey drops and beeswax, some of which, in fact, all of which are in the 64k storage cells. So we're going to have to empty these as well and throw these through the MEIO port. And it should go to any available storage. It's only going to empty out the ones that it can. Yeah, that looks like all for that drive. I guess that one didn't have any honey drops or beeswax. Only what's in the sticky card destinations is going to be transferred. Everything else is just going to stay on the storage cell. So yeah, this MEIO port is super handy for cleaning out your drives. I think you can also do... Yeah, move to output when work is done. Awesome. So that should only take a few more seconds. And uh, with that, I'm going to get back to the bees. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing this for so long by now. And uh, I wonder how long it's going to take me. But yeah, as I said, we only have a few bees left to get before we can get Krypton. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, set up the alviaries as well. How many pyrothium combs are we currently at? Oh, we can't see, of course. I just took the drives out. Okay, everything is finished transferring. That actually cleaned up our drives a significant amount. They're no longer in the red, as all the all the bulk items are now in... Oh, we'll need some facades here as well. All the bulk items are now in the super chests. And uh, pyrothium combs were sitting at 2,000, which isn't really so bad. Uh, it's only a 20% chance from the centrifuge to get pyrothium dust, though. So I'm thinking that we're going to have to add some more bees. And we'll also add this into our stocking bus as well. Yeah, I'm thinking that more bees are going to be necessary uh, for pyrothium, so I might also just add a few more of those as well. It shouldn't be too too difficult, it's just getting all the stuff crafted, like I said in the previous segment. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> it's gonna take It's going to take me more than one day, I think, to get all this bee stuff done. I think we might have just caught the craft here any second now it's going to finish. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I threw so many eggs, I'm not surprised to see these guys here, to be honest. Oh, there's two of them. I did just see another one, though. Somewhere else. Oh, just a little bit further. See ya. <laughs> oh, is he going to land on the on the roof there? I don't know if he's going to make it. I don't know if he's going to make it. So hard to tell from this angle. I don't think he's going to make it, though. Nah, he's doomed. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, little chicken. You were so close. You were so close, but... Yeah, so along with the large processing factories, I did also manage to get some more alviaries crafted. And uh, I just picked up the next two pyrothium queens as well. They should be in the inventory. We have one here. I think the other one is still in the apiary. In fact, wait, hold on. I hope I didn't leave that on. Because if I lift that on, that means the oblivion frame might, might run out of durability. Oh no, we're good, we're good. Yeah, we don't want these things to break because they're a very expensive replacement. In fact, we don't even know the recipe for it, but it's still quite an expensive craft. Um, yeah, we found those ones in the stronghold, and uh, I've just been using the Thalmic Restorer to keep them around. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and build two more alviaries for the pyrothium bees. And I think the biomes here should already be changed to corrupted sands, which they are. Um, we're actually quickly running out of princesses, uh, pristine stock. So we're going to have to go out and uh, hunt for some more pretty soon. Uh, we do have about 10 or 12 left, I think. So we're good for a while, but yeah, we're going to run out um, sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, two more pyrothium bees to add to our collection. Pyrothium. 
and pyrothium. Uh, so yeah, I did also fix the crafting speed of the alveary blocks as well. Since I went ahead and added some carpenters, I remembered that the carpenters is much faster than the assembler recipes. The downside to doing this though is that they are limited to just one recipe, you have to specify exactly what you want to craft inside. So for now we have two set up here, although we're only using the one for scented panelling. Um, and this is used in the alveary craft. For each alveary casing block, it's eight scented panelling and one impregnated casing. And the scented panelling takes 60 seconds at MV in an assembler, so this takes quite a while, but in the carpenter it's significantly faster. And it's the same cost, so yeah, I switched the scented panelling to run inside the carpenter. And in fact, let's let's just batch craft like a thousand of this stuff, just for future, just so that we have it. And we can get an idea as to the crafting speed here. I think previously it took 15 seconds in our assembler, and this is definitely nowhere near 15 seconds. So yeah, that significantly speeds up the time to craft alveary blocks. And I should have added, I should have added this way sooner. So back over at the LPFs, I thought that I would just leave this set up in place since it isn't broken, so we might as well just leave it as is. And uh, we'll set up two LPFs, one on each side eventually. Um, although for today, we're just going to add the one. Yeah, we're going to have to change the mode. The machine type should be machine type B for fluid extraction. So is it, is that fluid mode? I think it's fluid mode. It doesn't say on the tooltip here, but we'll find out if it doesn't work here in a second. Um, it looks like it is formed the multi-block. Let's do some maintenance. We'll enable batch mode and we'll switch it on. So underneath, I did also add the energy hatch. It should be in the buffer between this little gap here, <laughs> between the roof of ore processing, this layer here, and the floor of the bee processing area, if we can actually get in there. We do have a little wiring space, a little wiring tunnel. Nope. It's still not the right place. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there we go. We're in the right place. Okay. Yeah, we do have a little wiring tunnel here so we can connect our energy hatch to some vanadium gallium cable. This is going to be... No, this is this is ivy, so we need a transformer. That's right. And all these spare transformers are from the overworld. Uh, so it's quite good that we managed to recycle a lot of it. We can use one of them here. And we'll plug in LUV power here. Which, uh, fortunately, we do have run in through the middle. Um, so this is actually in half mode, so we'll have to change it since we're using all eight amps of LUV, or sorry, of IV. So we need to convert this to 16 amps. So it's doing four amps LUV to 16 amps IV. And that should be enough to give us more power on this side here. Oh no, I broke the cable. No. <laughs> Dang it, we just voided something there. And I also just realized when, as I said that out loud, LUV, yeah, that that's LUV. We need to, we actually don't need the transformer. I was right the first time. We don't need the transformer here since this is LUV power, or sorry, IV power right here. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, platinum cable is what we want here. We don't want LUV power. We just need the IV to connect to the large processing factory and we do not need the transformer there. I got there eventually. And for no other reason other than I don't want cable across here, we're going to use wireless connectors from here to here. <laughs> like a four block distance, it's only 19 AE a tick. And that gives us channels, uh, which we're connecting up there somewhere. And so now on the LPF, assuming we have this in the right mode, all we should have to do is request our Krypton, Pyrothium, Neon Combs, and uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. We'll leave the honey and the oil in the existing single block machines here. It looks like it might not be in the right mode. Um, oh yeah, that's right. There's the circuit number. It should be circuit 20, 21 and 22. And since it's in the middle, it's 21. Nice. 6.25 seconds for 6,000 buckets of... No, not 6,000. Six buckets of neon. So it's doing a few in parallel because of batch mode. Although I think if we give it more power, which we might be able to do, although we certainly don't have enough bee production to keep one of these running permanently right now. So I think it's fine as is just to keep the one energy hatch and there's no need to overclock right now. It's going to eventually get through the backlog and that should all be going into the output hatch. 
So it's going to cash Neon, it's going to cash Pyrothium, and it's going to cash the Krypton gas. Nice. And remember, this is on mainnet as well, so we need to give a, a space in main fluid storage. So we are going to add some super tanks here, and we'll have to make sure we filter the storage buses as well. Do we have any more crafted? We only have super tank ones right now. Let's just make it consistent and we'll, we'll make another super tank too. First one is going to be for Krypton. Filter the storage boss as well, high priority. Second one for Neon. And third one for Blazing Pyrothium. Which one is it going to be? I think it will be the bucket version. Let's try it out. If it doesn't work, that if it's not the right version, it's not going to be placed in here. Once we plug all these in, we should start to see these tanks fill up. I think as soon as they get a channel. Oh yeah. 200 buckets of Blazing Pyrothium, 177k Neon. And still zero Krypton. I think it might just not have processed that right now. One of the cool things about the output hatch is it will infinitely cache fluids again. Uh, so we don't have to worry about storage space, either for the fluids or for the items. Because everything is, is eventually going to be sent through the large processing factory. Regardless of if fluid storage is filled up. And uh, the excess fluid is just going to be cached here. When that tank is full. And that also means we don't have to worry about subnet storage here. Although it's, it is now fixed and we have plenty of space here for B outputs. So yeah, we now have a passive source of Krypton gas, of Neon gas and of Blazing Pyrothium. And we can now move on to the main project of the day which is the Vulcanus. Again though, I think we will still want to have some more Krypton bees and some more Blazing Pyrothium bees. Um, or yeah, the Pyrothium. Oh, I just realized the conduits here are wrong again. What did I do this time? Not filter it? Yeah, I didn't filter the... The chest, so energy combs, pyrothium combs should be filtered in right here. The conduits at least look correct this time. <laughs> yeah, it was just the filters. And some more eggs. Oh, there you are. <laughs> and he's getting regeneration because of the bees as well. Like every time the bee runs its cycle, which is like permanently because of the infinite loop, we have the beatific effect, which gives regeneration. And it looks like it also applies to the chicken here. Another one? Are you kidding me on? Was this the same guy from earlier? Uh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> so just before the episode started, I did also take a trip to Ganymede as well and uh, got our miners collected and also in Callisto. So we, if you'll remember, we had one miner on Callisto and two on Ganymede, I think. It might be in the other way around, but in any case, I went and collected all the miners and then I replaced one of them on Ganymede. Um, that was about 16 hours ago by now in game, so it looks like by now the drill has exhausted all resources And I'm also curious if it if it's still backlogged in ore processing. I think it probably is by this point. Oh, yeah Oh, yeah, that's not a good sight to see that means that we definitely have to add some more oh, This has maintenance as well, which is Yeah, definitely not ideal. Um, I think the macerator is our biggest bottleneck in ore processing though but I think we'll get to this in another episode. For now, I want to focus on the Vulcanus, and I'll go and collect the Miner again and probably replace it. Yeah, that's just something you can assume I'm doing in the background. Um, speaking of the Miner, though, I did also remember about this. About six hours ago or so, uh, well, it was yesterday, but I had to turn off our Indium Dust LCR, since this is consuming an insane amount of sulfuric acid, and we use sulfuric acid in a few other locations, mainly in circuits, so... Um, yeah, crafting all the bee stuff, which does require circuits, uh, meant that we were out of sulfuric acid because this was running and indium dust is also used in circuits, but by now we have a decent amount of indium. We have 1200. Another egg. Yeah, just to remind you the recipe for indium dust, it's made from aluminium dust, which we have millions of, and indium concentrate. And this is made from sulfuric acid, purified galena, and purified sphalerite. And I think what happened is when I moved the miner, we had filled our buffers again on either Galena or Sphalerite. And so this machine had turned on again. It was off for the longest time. And I'm going to keep it off for now until we figure out a solution. Um, but I'm just going to watch our supplies and turn it on and off as needed. 
we could do a level emitter or something. There's definitely solutions for that, but um, it's not going to be a long term problem, I don't think. And eventually, we can we can actually pump sulfuric acid from other planets, if I remember right. It's not just made in the chemical reactor. We also do um, process this as a byproduct from a lot of different locations. Uh, but we also do have a dedicated producer, and yeah, we can pump it from tier 4 planets, which we don't quite have access to just yet since we only have tier 3 rocket maximum. So that might be something to look at, but for now I want to stay focused on the Vulcanus, and I'm aware of this video's length, um, so I'm not sure if we're going to actually craft this today. But let's uh, at least make an attempt at setting up the recipes, which we should now be able to do, no problem. So LUV circuits is going to be master quantum computer, right? We have two crafted. Let's add the recipe and also clean up the inventory here. We don't need any of this anymore. Yeah, so this is going to go inside our molecular assemblers, which have uh, amassed quite a few patterns since the last episode. I did one or two extra off camera, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to keep adding recipes where we need it. Um, so. For the Vulcanist controller, we are going to need two IV robot arms, which we should have the recipe for already. We don't. Wait, we don't? I guess I missed that one. I'm going to add it as a molecular assembler recipe, just to cut down the amount of normal assembler recipes until we have the precise assembler. Um, so it's not like we're going to be crafting loads and loads of these things at this stage of the game, and eventually we'll move, to, move it into the faster assembler. Okay, so clear the pin screen. That also reminds me we need some coils for the Vulcanus as well, so let's uh, start requesting some HSSS. So it's it's uh, two stacks of coils per blast furnace. So that's 128 times... I think we're going to start with four Vulcanus, although we do wall shear, so I don't remember the exact number. It's going to be the same amount of coils as this, because it's the same multi-block structure, it's, except it's different casings and different controllers. So how many coils is this right here? We want exactly the same amount. 35, 36 if I'm counting correctly. I think it's 36 coil blocks. Each coil is 8 ingots, so that's uh, 8 times 36. We can let Applied Energistics do the math for us. And that is a lot of ingots. Wait, 2000 HSSS? Is that right? No, that's not right. That's 288 coil blocks. What did I just do there? Oh yeah, I requested the coils. Yeah, so we just need to... <laughs> we just need to request 36 here. Yeah, 320 HSSS. That's more like it. Let's go ahead and start that craft. Okay, so back to the Vulcanus controller. We need the Vulcanus casing, which we're also going to need to... Yeah, for the multi-block itself, not just in the controller. So we'll add a recipe for this. This does also have an assembler recipe as well. And you know what, I'm going to change to the assembler for this one. Just because I know I'm going to forget it later on, to change it later on, so I'm just going to add it here. In assembler circuit 1. This in and of itself is a quite nested craft. There's a lot of GT++ alloys, haste alloy W, haste alloy N, and haste alloy X. I'm not sure if we have any of, the, any of those encoded already. We have H, haste alloy X. And we do have the recipe for that one. So that means we just need the frame box recipe, which is assembler circuit 4. And there's a lot of frame boxes in there already. I'm wondering if we're going to have enough recipe pattern slots. Let's, let's find out. Okay, so we'll need the blast smelter recipe, circuit 5, molybdenum, yttrium. Oh, yttrium. Oh, no. Titanium, chrome. Circuit 5, this is uh, 25, 25 ingots of haste alloy N. And because of our specific configuration, we have to, uh, we're fluid solidifying into the ingot directly. So we have to change and edit the pattern here manually. So it's going to be that instead. And this was a uh, blast smelter five. Now, yttrium dust. Do we have yttrium dust? We have a tiny amount. Is that going to be enough? <laughs> so the reason I'm so worried here is yttrium is a rare earth output, which is a special processing line from redstone um, and that is not something that we have set up just yet so yeah yttrium ore we do not have access to right now because this is tier six planets and tier well yeah tier six seven and eight planets we get niobium veins but the other way to get yttrium dust i have no clue how we got our existing yttrium dust the other way to get it is from rare earth 
and that is also a mouthful for me so i'm gonna say re from now on <laughs> it's from rare earth and crushed rare earth we get from chemical baths and we get yeah sulfuric acid plus rare earth gives us crushed rare earth crushed re so in ore processing here we should already have that filtered out inside of our chemical bath here but you might remember this is one of the ones we have not finished configuring yet oh we don't have it filtered out we don't have it filtered out no that's correct actually because rare earth is a normal dust so, so we should be storing rare earth dust and we have 60k no that's right okay yeah that's right that's right yeah, what we don't have set up right now is the chemical bath. So we're going to have to set this up with uh, sulfuric acid. And this is not going to be a long-term solution. So this is white cable here. We should just be able to do this and we'll batch craft some just to get our Vulcanus. And then we'll fix ore processing when we fix ore processing. So this should enable us to pull sulfuric acid from the main net. Remember, this is on a subnet right now. So I don't remember exactly how I had this configured. We're not getting any fluid here. That's not a good sign. It's in here somewhere between the interfaces between mainnet and subnet. If you saw the ore processing episode, then uh, there's this spaghetti back here. And so we have ore processing send to mainnet. This is the this is backwards. So we want this one here. Mainnet send to ingest network fluids. So yes, this one. So orange is our mainnet. This is where we have main fluid storage. This is where sulfuric acid is being sent. And we, yeah, sodium persulfate, that's something we have to set up. So we'll go ahead and add a capacity card and also request sulfuric acid in here. And that's going into a storage bus. Oh, and I also just realized your storage bus isn't going to work because we're going to have to storage bus on the machine since we don't have any fluid storage on this subnet. So we're going to have to do dual interface instead here. I think it should be a simple enough fix just by swapping out this device with a dual interface and that way the fluid export bus is going to export the fluid from the main net into the dual interface then it's going to go into any available storage right and that available storage is going to be on the machine here which I've placed a storage bus on filtered for sulfuric acid so now we have sulfuric acid here and just for this episode we're going to filter in our rare earth dust in the stocking input bus. Normally this would be on extract all uh, from this subnet here, which is already filtered stuff, but this has to go through sodium persulfate or mercury. Um, we're gonna have to set separate them out and add, also add some more machines here. But yeah, for now we're just gonna use this to process rare earth and uh, we're just gonna send a whole bunch of it. Wait, 80,000, how, how is that? Was it not 60,000 a moment ago or was that only in the subnet? <laughs> Wait, I think it's, I think some of it is stored in our main net. Yeah, some of it is currently in the main net. We're just going to take like a whole inventory worth of it here and filter it inside our chemical bath subnet. And that should start to process by now. Assuming this is in the right mode, etc, etc. Oh yeah, it has to convert into distilled water. Uh, yeah, that should start, but that is going to give us crushed rare earth. Yeah, this is a whole chemical processing line. You can either get rare earth 1 rare earth 2 or rare earth 3 depending on what um chemical you send it with the chemical bath which is why i'm not doing this fully automatic right now since we have to figure this out yeah we are doing this recipe right here sulfuric acid it's going to give us crushed rare earth 1 and uh, we want this to be sent yeah we want it sent down this uh, chain right here we want it macerated we're going to get this one here we do not want it to go to the ore washer because this only gives us nether quartz and we want to target this yttrium dust right here so we need to make sure in our maceration filters, which is over here, we need to make sure that we see rare earth one. It might already be in there. I'm unsure. We might, um, because I copied these from the season one world. And by that point, we had already dealt with uh, rare earth. So it may already be here somewhere. Oh, I passed it. It was right at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be sent automatically to the macerator. And of course, that is already backed up, right? More eggs. Yeah, it's here, it's here. 2500 is is stored in the macerator right now. I think what I might do just to skip the queue is take this and we'll set up a recipe pattern for it. Well, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because there's multiple different steps. I'm just going to throw it through our macerator and we'll just batch craft this. It should be very, very fast to macerate, I think. 
6.25 seconds and it's doing multiple at a time. Okay, so a short while later, I think I got all the recipes in. There was a lot of them to add to get all this stuff craftable, um, to teach applied energistics. Um, but I think I got them all. There is, I believe, just one more for the Vulcanist controller. But our casing blocks are now requestable. Um, if we take, like, for example, 24, I don't know how many we need, but I'm just using this as an example. This is quite an expensive craft. Uh, we'll we'll hold off on us for a second, but yeah, for the Vulcanist, there's one more we have to encode, and that is the Greg Tech Computer Cube. So the Greg Tech Computer Cube is gonna be, well, data orbs. We actually have a few of these from loot bags, I think. We have one from a loot bag, and we have the computer monitor cover, which we do have the recipe for. We're missing lime dye, but I'll add that. Yeah, the data orb. Let's uh, make sure we add a circuit assembly recipe for this one. But this is also going to take our first IV, or sorry, ZPM circuit. Uh, yeah, this recipe right here. This has to go inside a circuit assembler. We'll drop it in right there. And uh, yeah, we need ZPM circuits for this. So yeah, it took a very long time for us to get to this stage, but we can finally start to look at the next tier of circuit. And uh, looking at our overview here, we are going to be working towards this one here for ZPM. Um, so right now the highest tier of circuit we are currently able to craft is the master quantum computer, which is LUV. And uh, again, we want to be furthest down and to the right as possible, um, since that is the cheapest version and the highest tier version of the circuit. But we do have to start at the mainframe, um, pretty much for every, every single tier. So this is the most expensive version of ZPM circuits. But um, I think the next tier up does require us to have the circuit assembler. The ultimate crystal computer, which is also ZPM. All these in this line is ZPM. This one requires, I believe, uh, yeah, it takes the next year of LUV to craft. And this takes, I think, Nequada or something like that. Wait, why can't we just jump straight to this one? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, to make the next year of LUV, we need advanced SMD inductors, and this takes Samarium, and we do not have a way of making Samarium. Samarium is another ore processing chain, and it's a full chemical line slash, I don't know, spaghetti wet mess in NEI. <laughs> it's a whole different thing to get Samarium. We did manage to get some from Quest Rewards last episode. We have four rods, but this is nowhere near enough, so... Yeah, all this to say, we're going to add our mainframe for the ZPM circuit. We have to start with this one. Uh, so yeah, it takes two two LUV circuits per ZPM circuit. <laughs> so it's so, so expensive. But um, yeah, we don't really have much of a choice at this point. Uh, but that should be once we had add the computer cube. Uh, this recipe here, we want the mainframe. We want to use the mainframe in this recipe. Was it assembler circuit zero? I think it might be. Yeah, so let's now try to request our... Oh, we're still missing some stuff. Nor memory and NAND memory. That is some cutting machine recipes. We don't need the lubricant in the recipe. Let's add this one. I'm not sure if we have the wafer recipe though. Yeah, I'm not so sure we have the wafer recipe yet. Let's find out. We'll add these to our cutting machine though. So one more. We're missing the NAND memory chip. And this might be the one that I left out of the laser. I have a feeling this might be our blank laser engraver. If you were really, really paying attention, then you'll remember this. So when we set up the large processing factories, there was one lens which which I left blank. I think it may have been this one. That's green sapphire. Ender pearl. I think it's this, right? For NAND memory chips. Yeah, this is made in the ender pearl lens. And this is exactly what I left this blank for. I couldn't remember what it, what it was for specifically, but it looks like we found the answer right here. This is for NAND memory. So now we should be able to request Vulcanus. And uh, oh yeah, I did also process all of that rare earth as well. Um, yeah, we can request our one controller. This is one controller. Let's say we wanted four Vulcanus controllers though. Okay, we're short some SMD diodes. I think we might just be missing a recipe. But apart from that, we can... Oh, 96 EV circuits. <laughs> 96 EV circuits, that's insane. That This is so much stuff. 
Okay, one more recipe, and then uh, I think we're going to call it an episode right here because this is getting very, very long. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to save this for next episode, so... And we just run out of space for this, unfortunately. We'll need a capacity card, which we do have. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap up this episode here. Let's request our multi-block, and then uh, I'll make up the rest of the things we need for next episode, and uh, we'll, we'll jump straight into crafting and assembling this thing. And uh, also by that point, we should have enough pyrothium to at least kickstart and test the machine. So assembler three, we want this in right here. Let's move these up so that they're all in all in a line, all the SMDs. And yeah, we, we do want to uh, progress onto the advanced SMDs. And I think for some of them, we can just not the one with Samarium. So yeah, four Vulcanus, please. No way. <laughs> no way we're missing one. One gallium arsenide dust. Okay, maceration recipe. Four Vulcanus, please. There we go. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and request our four Vulcanus. And wow. Let's check out the crafting plan for this as well. Yeah, this is also behemoth. That's bigger than the large processing factory for sure. Well, maybe not. I don't... Mm, I'm not sure. It's... It's a big, large, large craft either way. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's do it. Let's start this. I must say, this does feel very rewarding at this point, after putting in so many hours to get auto-crafting to where it is, <laughs> that we can just request this, and we have the platinum available, for example. We have all the resources available because of our robust ore processing. I mean, ignore the speed right now, but yeah, this is going to take a very long time, I think. There's a lot of blast furnace recipes in here. I think I've seen like 500 and something energetic alloy. And we're still waiting on the HSSS cooking right now. So yeah, that is going to take a while. We are going to have to delay our objective until next episode. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.